What's up everyone? I'm over here today at my buddy Al's house. We just finished renovating his man cave. There's a few parts that we're gonna go through in this build. The main feature is that we made a one-piece waterfall concrete countertop with integrated LEDs that waterfall over the edge. This is the first of two videos for this man cave makeover. In this video, we're gonna cover building the melamine form for the countertop and installing the countertop in the bar. In the second video, we're gonna cover the installation of the wood feature wall with the floating TV panel and the installation of the cabinets. So I've cut all of the countertop form pieces at home and I brought them on site here. The form is gonna be pretty simple. We're casting upside down, so we have the top of the counter on the bottom. So the first thing we're gonna do is attach the sides of the form which are three quarters inch taller than we want the sides of our countertop. And then we're going to attach the waterfall base piece. And after that, we're going to go and attach the sides to that. When I attach the waterfall to the base, I used right angle squares and clamped them down to make sure that the waterfall and top were perfectly perpendicular. And as I've shown in past videos, I pre-drilled in the melamine to make sure it didn't get blown out and then used drywall skewers to attach everything. Now these two pieces are going to be for support. So we're gonna attach these when we put the waterfall up to hold it at a right angle so that the waterfall is braced against the pressure of the concrete against it. And to make sure I had room to grind the concrete even with the sides of the form after it dried, I added spacers between the angle pieces and the sides. I also added a brace between the waterfall sides and the base sides to make sure that they were pulled flush so the inside of the form would also be flush. The next step was to add the molds for the LED channels in the countertop. This piece is actually going to sit inside the form and form a channel in the concrete where we can lay some LEDs. I've cut these at a slight angle it's going to give us a bevel which will allow us, when we cut a matching acrylic piece, it'll allow the acrylic piece to sit flush against the top of the counter and the bevel will hold it in place so we won't need any support from below for the acrylic piece. Here I'm using the same technique that I've used in all my past videos with concrete forms with a paste wax followed by silicone caulk and then running around all the edges of the caulk with a metal ball tool. So go back and watch some of those old videos to get this technique. It's a really cool way to get a clean and perfect caulk line in your concrete forms. While we're removing the excess caulk, I wanted to take a minute and remind you that if you like this video, please click the little red subscribe button below the video to get reminded about my future builds. Also, click that little thumbs up button to let YouTube know you like it, which really helps me out and helps me keep creating content. The melamine molds for the LED channels had exposed sides, so I went back and covered them with electrical tape, which will prevent water from getting into them. Then it was time to mix some concrete. For this build, I used a from scratch glass fiber reinforced or GFRC concrete mix. And because we wanted to get the face coat, which we're spraying on, and the back coat a consistent color throughout, we mixed up 280 pounds of this all at once in a big bucket. First, I measured out about 40 pounds of the mix from the big bucket to make the face coat. Then used a drywall hopper to spray the face coat on, which is gonna give you a really nice, smooth, even coat that's not too thick. Uh, and I've got all the links to the products that I used in the video description. And you'll notice I'm doing the edges and corners first when I spray because you want to avoid sand bouncing in there and giving you an uneven coat. After waiting 30 minutes for the face coat to dry, I mixed up the back coat, which is identical except for the addition of the glass fibers. And I used uh, about uh, a pound and a half of glass fibers for each 50 pound batch uh, that I made. I made this a little bit thicker, uh, kind of the consistency of Play-Doh, so that I could pack it by hand against the vertical face, and just use my hand to 
pull it up and so that it would then stick to that vertical face and wouldn't slump down. After putting three quarters of an inch down, I used a compaction roller to push the back coat into the face coat and to align the fibers, which will give you a really strong GFRC mix when you have a long horizontal span in a case like this. Then went and used some foam inserts inside of the concrete so that it would keep the weight down and put the final quarter inch of the GFRC back coat mix on top of the foam to encase it in the countertop. After I finished the vertical face, I was still getting a bit of slump, so I just stayed there for 30 minutes or so every once in a while working it up with my hand to make sure that the vertical face packed in nicely. Because I wanted this to be really strong, I used a really high glass fiber density that resulted in a mix that just wouldn't perfectly level uh, on its own. Because of that, we're going to take uh, this angle grinder, which Tack Life Tools actually sent this to me to try out. So we're going to put it through its paces, see how it does grinding down concrete today. To grind it, I just used a really inexpensive diamond cup wheel that I got off Amazon. There's a link in the description for that. The Tack Life grinder and the diamond cup wheel cost under 50 bucks together and they worked really well. So if you're looking for uh, a, an inexpensive option for a grinder, I think this is a good combo. Before demolding the counter, I ground down the base of the waterfall flat so it would sit nicely on the floor. I also ground the face and inner corner of the waterfall so it would fit nicely around the cabinet. Then it was time for the big reveal and demolding, which actually wasn't that big of a deal because I had some really bad lighting. So I apologize for some of the poor lighting in the video throughout. But I promise at the end of the video, we're going to have some really nice shots of everything put together. So second apology, I forgot to record myself applying a slurry coat, which is a mix of sand and cement that you rub in with your hands to fill voids. And you see me sanding that off here. So after sanding everything even, all that was left to do was to apply the sealer and get it nice and beautifully shiny. Actually, that wasn't everything. There's a little part about having to maneuver this huge, awkwardly shaped 270 pound counter inside and onto the cabinets. It actually wasn't too bad with a few friends to help out. Next, I took the piece of the form that I'd used to make the LED channels back to my shop and I used it to make sure I could set my table saw on the exact same angle. This way when I cut the acrylic strips they would be the exact same width and the exact same angle bevel as the channel in the LED countertop and would sit so that they were flush against the top of the countertop. I used a smoke gray transparent acrylic to make the strips and sprayed them with a frosted glass spray so that you couldn't see the LEDs through the diffusers when the lights were off. I then ran the power and control lines through a hole I drilled in the channel, used the tape to stick the LED strips in the channel, and put the diffuser on. Then we wired everything and fired it up. If you've watched my past videos, you know I've used an Arduino with an electric mic to control LEDs and sync them to music. This time I simplified things by using an off-the-shelf LED controller that only costs about 10 bucks, includes an RF remote, does music syncing, chasing modes, and solid color modes. It's pretty cool. I'll leave a link in the description. That's it for part one of the man cave. If you like this, please click that little subscribe button below, click the thumbs up to let YouTube know you like it, and be sure to check out the second part, which should be either out now or out shortly, depending on when you're watching it. Thanks and I'll see you next time.